Hello everyone, my name is Eva Gedritite. I'm a lecturer researcher at the Institute of International Relations and Political Science at Vilnius University and I'm taking over Ling and Florian today to discuss EU as an actor but focusing on its southern neighborhood. So there are two videos that compose this blog. The first one that you are watching now, it's about the concept of the southern neighborhood and why it matters. The second video is going to tackle how the EU engages in its southern neighborhood and what does it tell about the EU as an actor in the international relations. So let's start. Southern neighborhood is a part of the neighborhood. So when we speak about it, we speak about the policies, we speak about the ideas and we speak about the geography. So Southern neighborhood, it falls under the framework of European neighborhood policy, which is sort of foreign policy tools that is guiding the European Union engagement with the closest, geographically closest uh, neighbors in the South and in the East. So it's sort of umbrella framework because there are general pan-European, pan-neighborhood principles, strategies, instruments, but then there are bilateral relationship and bilateral agreement with each of the countries. Another important institution or policy and when we speak about the southern neighborhood is Union for the Mediterranean. Because you can imagine, Eastern European policies and challenges are not really the same as southern European. So Union for Mediterranean is sort of this very practical arm of European neighborhood policy in the Mediterranean. It's an intergovernmental organization focusing more on these pan-Mediterranean projects on infrastructure, energy, etc., etc., that uh, includes all the EU member states and 15 countries from the Mediterranean. Now, we use the word Mediterranean, and Mediterranean both is geography, so these are the countries around Mediterranean, Southern Europe, uh, North Africa, West Asia, but it's also a constructed concept. And Mediterranean region, sometimes it's called constructed region, emphasizing often that it's constructed by Europe, since the Roman times and since the concept of, you know, Mare Nostrum. So the text you are going to lead for, for this module will expand a little bit more on this idea. So, southern neighborhood, policies and institutions, uh, geography and ideas. Now, why it matters for the European Union? Why southern neighborhood is important? There are long-standing historical linkages and cultural closeness. However, if you read European documents, the, I would say the main word <laughs> that sort of penetrates them all is the security. The f there are different elements of security, but we can distinguish here for the case of this MOOC, three, migration, conflict, terrorism, and energy. So talking about migration, uh, you most probably have heard about the migration crisis. You have seen videos and pictures. Uh, it took place in 2015. However, migration in general, from the south to north in the Mediterranean basin is an old phenomenon and not always has been seen as something dangerous. For example, after the Second World War, uh, Western countries were searching for workers in the neighborhood. However, in the past decades, it's really became strongly a security topic. And what you see here in the map uh, is that actually the path to migrate to Europe most often passes through one or another part of Mediterranean. So the Mediterranean partners are very important for this EU goal of migration management and it's sort of at the core of majority bilateral agreements and disagreements in the Mediterranean. Another important topic for the European Union are the conflicts. So we speak about the war in Syria, Libya, we speak about the wars that are taking place in the south of our southern neighbors. And it's related with the fear of terrorism. If you would read European documents, you would find a lot of concepts of that, you know, ideas that a lack of economic development, lack of economic opportunity leads to, you know, people being more willing to enter terrorist orga terroristic organization. And this is a security threat for the European Union. So there's a strong securization uh, of the cooperation with the Mediterranean. And the final element that's becoming more and more important with the Russia's invasion in Ukraine is the energy. If you would be looking at this graph, you would see that European Union is uh, importing majority of its oil from Russia. However, 
Algeria and Libya are also there and their weight in the southern European countries import is way higher. And there are also other southern countries like Arabia, Nigeria, Iraq. They are not members of the neighborhood policy, but they are countries that European is looking uh, forward and are trying to engage, especially now trying to diversify their oil dependency from Russia. If we are looking at the gas, it's even more uh, visible, the EU's dependence from Russia, it's 41%, but also there is Algeria, and Algeria is the 10th biggest oil, uh, gas exporter in the world, 10th biggest. So while I'm recording this video, I'm sure there are ongoing talks and efforts, and efforts to increase Algerian share uh, in the EU imports of the gas. So the energy security, European energy security, especially in the current context, is also strongly related with the southern neighborhood countries. So security, migration flows, conflict resolution, uh, terrorism as a threat, energy tensions, etc. There are all these topics that are, make the southern neighborhood very relevant for the European Union. As for us as a scientist, it's a very interesting place to see European Union act. I'm not going to talk about normative power Europe concept because Link talked about a lot and extensively. But what's interesting that several authors sort of departed from this normative power Europe idea and sustain that European Union is an exceptional actor. And is exceptional if we compare it with the US, for example, which is another Western power. So they even said that, you know, there is such a concept of Pax Americana and Pax Europea, it's the way how European Union engages with Global South, with other regions, etc. And it's somehow less imperialistic, it's somehow more horizontal, more inclusive than the one proposed by the US. And here neighborhood becomes a very interesting place to study this dynamic. Because in several cases the authors compare the EU and US engagement in the regions or in the thematic areas where these actors did not really have similar interests. It's not that difficult to, for European Union to be very normative in Latin America. However, the neighborhood, it's the place where European Union has a lot of stakes, uh, where it has, let's say, more economic power than its neighbors, when it has a tools to act. So to study it there really may help us to understand European Union as a global actor. And that is something we're going to discuss in our next video.